thanks for having me tonight. Uh, first question, is Python interpreted or compiled? How many people think Python is interpreted? How many people think Python is compiled? How many people know that it's a trick question? <laughs> All right. We start with our Python module. This is a Celsius to Fahrenheit library. I know that it's critically important you understand this, right? Celsius times 1.8 plus 32, that is Fahrenheit. When we go and import this module, compilation happens. Poof. It happened behind the scenes. You never even really saw it happen. Anybody ever actually notice this? There's underscore, underscore, pi cache, underscore, underscore. And you're like, what the hell is this directory that's clogging up my file system? That's where we store this. So behind the scenes, when you import, compilation takes place. And compilation goes and takes your Python code and rewrites it as this stack-based virtual machine. So here we can see a set of opcodes, load fast, load const. This is how that function is actually getting it evaluated inside the Python interpreter. So this is neat. It works on your machine, but you need to share it with other people. How do you share it with other people? You go to PyPy, right? How many people have ever installed something from PyPy? Hopefully almost everyone. How many people have ever published something on PyPy? Hey, I see a lot of hands. That's great. When we create something for PyPy, we create a setup.py file. So here's what mine's going to look like. And I'm going to throw something into the mix that's a little different. I'm going to throw Cython in. Cython is an amazing tool that takes my Python code and rewrites it in C code. So that same Python code we just saw becomes something that looks like this. Isn't that ugly? You do not want to write this yourself. You want a tool to write it for you, and that's what Cython does. Even uglier is this. When you go and compile that C code, it's going to become machine code. And the machine code is going to lower itself down into things like mole SD, XMM0. What's that stand for? Multiply. And what's the second one? Add, right? This is actually doing our floating point arithmetic that was in our original Fahrenheit. Is this stuff fast or slow? Fast. fast. How fast? AF. Like you would measure, yeah, I liked how someone said that, AF. Uh, <laughs> you would measure this in cycles, right? Like mole SD is probably something that could be vectorized. You could count the number of cycles inside your processor. How many cycles do you get per second? Billions, right? Like three billion of them. So there's a huge performance benefit here. If you take your Python code, apply Cython, and then distribute that to the world, you will make everyone faster. Woohoo! Right? Don't you all want to run faster Python? What's the drawback, though? It's specific to that machine. So when I'm running it on my Mac, the binary is different than when you're running it on your Windows or your Linux or whatever else you might have. So this is a huge problem. Fortunately, GitHub Actions to the rescue. So GitHub Actions is a new free service for open source projects. It's from GitHub. It basically allows you to define a workflow. And that workflow will run on different platforms. So now we can run on Windows. We can run on Mac. We can run on Linux. We can even run inside containers. Someone say, ooh, fancy. <laughs> All right. When we do this, we create a matrix build. A matrix build allows us to say which Python versions we're going to build on top of. So I'm supporting 3.5. 363738. I'm jumping the gun a little bit here. Death to 27, right? Like, wait one month, that'll be perfect. On Mac, it's a little, it's actually the easiest on Mac. So you're going to install some package dependencies. You're going to build the wheel. Done. Inside a disk directory, you're going to get a binary wheel, and you're going to use that to upload to PyPy. Linux is actually a little more complicated. You have to run this audit wheel tool. This was a huge pain to figure out. So I give this to you for free. This is what you need. Have you guys ever installed like NumPy and notice it's really fast? It didn't require that you have a Fortran compiler or a COBOL compiler or anything like that. That's because it downloaded one of these binary wheels. And it built it on top of this special distro called ManyLinux. Windows also has some special steps. You have to download the Visual Studio tools and build those. As you build each of those, you'll create artifacts. You store those artifacts. Finally, you create a source distribution, because there is some guy out there or some gal 
who is running on some distro or platform or processor you've never heard of. Don't screw that person. OK, then we do our binary wheels. And finally, we upload. And what's great about GitHub Actions is that you can keep your secrets with your account. And you can embed those into your commands. And that allows you to siphonize all the things. So when you get this working, you'll get a nice page like this that has all your binary wheels along with your source distribution uploaded to PyPy. And when people pip install, they get all that for free. All right, thanks for letting me share.